I'm going to log into our Elements demo system as a researcher, Professor Beth Breeze, and we'll start with a little bit of orientation first of all. So when a researcher first logs in, they'll find sitting here at the top of the screen, the Elements main menu. This is a persistent menu that can be accessed from any page within Elements, and the menu items I see here reflect the fact that I'm logged in as a researcher, and my options are focused around me and what I can do with my data. So for example, you can see that under my profile, I have links to my work, information about me, so my profile data, and various settings that I have the ability to control. In evaluation review, we see my submissions, so evaluation review exercises for me to complete or requests for internal reviews that I can submit. Into open access and my deposits here shows publications that need to be deposited, as well as those items that have already been deposited. And reporting over here takes me off to the reporting hub to run reports I have access to, as well as providing access to a few additional search features. This is a smart menu in that if I'm looking for a particular menu item, so for example, uh, my deposited items, I can start typing the word deposit. And you'll see over here on the right hand side, I'm automatically presented with a list of items that contain that particular string. So I don't need to find the relevant location of the item I'm looking for within the main menu itself. Over here on the left hand side, we have a fixed quick link menu. We've got our link back to the Elements homepage here, a link to our Elements profile here, and below a link to the Elements reporting hub here. Wherever a researcher is in Elements, they'll always see these options fixed to the left of the screen to help with navigation and orientation. So from here, within the Elements reporting hub, a researcher can very easily find their way back to the Elements homepage just by clicking the homepage icon here. When a researcher logs in, they're presented with a clear action panel to guide and to prompt them to complete actions that need their attention. So for example, Beth has a small number of harvested outputs to verify since she last logged in. She's also prompted to link her scholarly works to funding, to deposit items into her linked institution repository, and so on. And this is a dynamic actions carousel, and Beth will only see the action items that are open to her. Once she completes them, they'll disappear from her view. Over here on the right hand side, we have the elements profile tile and we capture lots of rich information about researchers and faculty, a lot more than just their research outputs and activity data, but also biographical information too. More on that a little bit later on. Below, Beth can see a summary of the data that's already been collected either by her or for her in the system. And these are the categories of data that once in elements will be reused across the system in a variety of use cases. So we have publications or research output data. This type of data is typically automatically harvested from remote data sources using combination of name and affiliation based search, as well as identifier based search. So for example, the dimensions researcher ID, a scopus author ID, an ORCID ID. And this minimizes the need for researchers and faculty to create these types of record manually, which saves some time. We also have the grants and contracts and teaching and supervision data categories. This type of data is typically fed into elements from existing on-campus systems, again, reducing the need for manual data entry by the academic. But we also automatically harvest grants data from dimensions as well. The fourth category, service and leadership or professional activity data. This type of data can also be fed into elements if the data exists in an existing on-campus institutional system. But out of all of these core data categories, these are typically the types of data that institutions often end up creating manual records for, purely because they don't often have an existing structured data source to draw upon. I should say that manual records can be created by researchers, faculty themselves, or by delegates acting on their behalf for each of these categories that you see here on the home screen. For researchers or faculty logging into Elements for the first time, we always look to avoid presenting them with a blank canvas when they first log in by importing or migrating existing data from legacy systems as part of implementation, pre-matched so that records are assigned to the correct researchers, and also by importing known researcher identifiers, so for example, ORCID IDs, Dimensions researcher IDs, to pre-configure Elements automatic claiming functionality.